So we are talking about, uh, this is my second start because for those that are uh, not here that have asked these questions, I do want to get this, your answer on tape so that you would have it. Um, we're talking about um, sexuality. We're gonna to have to do this in two weeks because there's been so many questions on sexuality. So please continue to, to send your questions. The, the ground rules really are this. Don't judge anyone. Everyone's question has meaning. Nothing's funny. Nothing's off limits. We're the church and God has seen everything. And so there is no topic that is taboo in the church. Well, it shouldn't be, at least not in my church. <laughs> you can talk about anything because this is Christ's church. And actually, it's not even my church. It's his church. And he wants people free. And so if we're not free to really ask questions and express ourselves, then really, why is the church here? Because people are struggling and, and we need to help people out of their struggle, okay? So that's what this series asked me of, is about, is to ask any question that's hindering your faith, ask family members that have questions or, or anything. You can, you can freely ask those questions. And if I don't know the answer, trust me, I'll pray and find an answer and get it back to you. And it'll be scripture, not my opinion. <laughs> um, and you can make your own call based on the reading of that particular scripture, but I will give you scripture. Okay, is that a comment? I see something in the chat. Is that a statement that somebody wants to make? Okay. It said amen. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, so when you see this picture, how do we respond? How do we respond to child molestation or uh, sex on the, on the, what do they call it? The red light district, peep shows, pornography. Um, we'll be probably talking about, you know, personal stuff, but this is outward stuff. How do you respond to people that have the gender identity questions and, uh, their, you know, love is love type of conversation, or even in the state where you have this person that's married, but yet they got their fling on the side. That's called adultery. What about fornicators? You know, the fornication seems to be normal. Now uh, that's, that doesn't seem to fit in this category, but does it, but does it, <laughs> so what are your thoughts? Come on, you gotta have thoughts. Well, when I see the child molestation thing and the the um the exotic shows, the red light and the black and white one, it makes me feel sick to my stomach, mm -hmm. like not hate it. Um, the other one that symbol, ever since I was little, those symbols that mean supposed to mean male and female or whatever. Mm -hmm. Ever since I was little, I thought those symbols were demonic. I just thought they were evil. So all that this time, you know, as I learned what different things mean, I guess a lot of times if it's foreign to me, I automatically attribute it to something bad. And I didn't know what that meant. And so I automatically was like, this is demonic. This this cartoon um, with these different people and the same sex people, to me, because it's presented in a cartoon, it kind of lessens the impact of what it's really representing and it makes it really it makes it really uh obtainable for kids and it makes it like um like a happy um everybody's welcome um it, it makes me mad mm -hmm. i don't like it mm -hmm. um this one over here with the man and, and when i seen it i didn't think of adultery i thought about polygamy because it's so prevalent right now where people are sharing their spouses and making this acceptable. And they actually use the Bible to justify it because of all the men that were having the multiple wives and stuff like that. And so somebody almost got me on that one. Oh, they almost got me. It was a close call. Mm -hmm. But then they turned into a weirdo and they showed their hand. Um, I was a weirdo for believing them, yes, but um, they were doubly a weirdo. Anyways, I almost fell into that one, but I thank God that I did it. Um, but I'm just saying that one right there, really, I just really be turning my head to the side, like what in the world is wrong with these people? Because I always felt like I wanted an exclusive relationship and that if someone tried to enter into my relationship that I would attack them. I have attacked them, actually. I have attacked them and my spouse uh, for that very thing. But I mean, um, it, you know, uh, just I couldn't, I, I don't feel... Um, and a, a coolness about sharing my significant other. So that, that too, 
kind of bothers me, but I do want to see how we can differentiate people using that Bible as the excuse for that polygamy. You know what I'm saying? I would like to delve into that maybe later or whatever, how they throw that out there as an excuse, like if the man can afford the women, then blah, 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 and the Muslim suit and blah, blah, blah. So that's my feelings on those those five pictures. Okay. So <laughs> they we have a personal expression of blah, nasty, ill. Okay, so like, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to some more thoughts about what you're seeing in these pictures. What are your thoughts? Don't be shy. Oh, for me personally, some of it I see me. Mm -hmm. Explain. I see me. Explain. Explain the strip tea stuff, perversion. The the people the in the cartoon. You're looking for identity. The couple, I was out there like that. What would I say? I just had to love people where they at. God loved me for where I was at. People don't understand. I was messed up. I tell all the men, when I was in Korea, I slept with prostitutes. I don't know who that prostitute slept with. I was bound. And we look and we so quick to judge the devil is a lie. I can't do that part. What would I say? I just sit and listen sometimes. I just listen to what they got to say. And I had to go from there. And that's how I had to do it. The other thought, go ahead. When I <clears throat> speak up so they can hear you. When I, I think about somebody molesting a child, you know, that really gets to me. Um, and um, I remember a situation in the prison where an inmate worked for me and then all of a sudden he disappeared. So I thought he got shipped out. But then another inmate came and told me, said, Miss Pauline, um, he's up in suicide watch. And I go, what are you talking about? I said, I thought he's he said, no, you need to see if you can go see him. And so I called the lieutenant and he said, yeah, you can go see him. And they had him up in suicide watch. And what happened is that uh, his wife, while he was in there, got hooked up with a child molester and the child molested, molested their baby and threw him out the window. And so she killed herself. And so he was gonna kill himself. And I go, if you do that, who's gonna take care of your baby? I said, you know, so, I talked him out of it, you know, but the picture was in my mind what this guy had did to this baby. I think the baby was three years old. And, uh, you know, my thing, I, I was so enraged. I thought about if I found him, I cut his penis off, you know, that's what I thought. Yeah, you know, that's what he deserved, you know. And so <laughs> that really kind of kind of get to me, but right. when I was in Chicago growing up, I grew up with homosexuals, we call them sissies, you know, and um, when I moved and come here, I lost touch with them, and every was maybe like about seven of us that we, because they called me Miss Thane, you know, because they were switching and all that, mm -hmm. and I was in love with those guys, I was crazy about those guys, but when I went back home, in 97, when my mom passed, it was only one left because the rest of them died at AIDS. Mm -hmm. And so when I saw Gerald and I I held him and tried to pray and talk to him, but he would he he just wouldn't do it. And it was a guy with him at that time. So I come back home. I've been home maybe 10 days and he passed away. So he had, must have had full-blown AIDS when I saw him, you know. And so it's always uh, bothered me. You know, I still try to pray for people. And we, with uh, FICCF, we have a line for that now where people can call in for prayer. And so, you know, because they're human beings too. And so we can't judge them, you know what I'm saying? But I have to go by the word of God because when they, I had a 14 year old, uh, Apostle knows her in Shelton, 
and she asked me, uh, where in the Bible can you show me that I said, I have to take you to Leviticus and I have to show you where it is. Where God says, man do not sleep with man and woman do not sleep with woman. How you going to multiply? You guys can't multiply. That's not what God, that's not what God, he, I, and then I had to stop saying what I was saying. God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. That's what I would say when they come to me with that. And so, that, and I see this new gender thing with these children, you know, and they don't have to ask their parents now what, what they're trying to pass. It's ridiculous. And so we have to really fight. We have to fight for the children. We have to fight for the rights. We have to stand. Um, I was looking at TV today when a guy was on there uh, on the news and they he was out preaching on the street and everybody was having their flags and plant, you know, and the police was protecting them. Uh, I saw that today and I go, you know what? But it took our rainbow. God had that rainbow in the sky for heavenly purposes, not the devil. We got to take that rainbow back. Amen. I sent you a, a text from Jorge. Are you able to lend anything in the conversation? Huh? Um, as far hello. as as far as you know, feelings and thoughts about Christians in that in the community. Hello. Yeah. Did you see my text? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um. Yeah. No. Um. Those pictures. Uh. The first one, the child molestation one, and the live show exotic one, and stuff like that. Um. Me personally, I have I have my own past with uh, the first picture that uh, I don't care to get into right. myself. Right. Um, the exotic show, I've never been to anything like that. Being a, somebody that's been married to a man before. Um, There is a lot of questions about sexual identity and like, what am I supposed to do? So I understand that picture. Um, I also agree that the rainbow flag is not a flag that supports who I am. Um, I'm a moderate conservative uh, gentleman that is attracted to men that believes that God still loves me just like I am. And it is the act of doing those activities. That is what is frowned upon. Thank you. Thank you for sharing and thank you for being open. I didn't want to introduce it any particular way because I didn't know what you were going to share. Um, so thank you. Uh, a lot yeah. of us Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just kind of waiting and listening a little bit to see first and then just kind of decided to speak. Well, thank you. Thank you for speaking. Um, because I think all sides, all viewpoints need to be heard um, because it's important. Um, when we think about this particular picture, <laughs> what does this mean? And all that we've stated, not just Jorge, just the group. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. How does that thought resonate with the thoughts that we have about it being uh, hurtful, or nasty, or, or bad? Or, or how, does, how does that work? in your guys' mind? So in my mind, I, I'll be really upfront. In my mind, um, I um, 
I don't like these things about me. You know, these 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 issues that I have um, that are coming up in my mind, that are coming up in my dreams, that are um, always constant. Um, I don't like it at all. And in fact, I hate it. And it's even even though it's sin within me, I still hate it. Um. And I think, and I feel embarrassed about it, and I feel very weird because um, even my husband was like my husband now, but he was like, "Yo, you know, he, you know, it was just like I was an insatiable person, and it just reminds me of how the flesh. It just reminds me of how the flesh is never satisfied, you know, and that I could never get enough, and that I always." would go to a, 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 the next thing and the next thing and the next thing, you know, and it was just, um, it, it, it was just something, something sexually driving me, you guys. And I, I can't even explain. I know, I know it wasn't a godly thing, but I'm just saying it was all, it, it, it was just like, I don't know how to explain it, but, um, you know, it had me wanting to take ecstasy pills and, um, and Molly and stuff like that to be more even more engrossed in that spirit. And um I needed to go. You know what I'm saying? I want to, I want to be, I, I want to be rid of it. You know, because it, it's just it's just evil. I can't even explain it, but it's just, it's just it never stops. It never stops. You know what I'm saying? My my I I uh, my my husband was sleeping with a girl. I don't, I don't, I, it doesn't really matter to me if other people believe it or not, but it happened. He was sleeping with a girl and this particular girl was bisexual. Well, he started sleeping with her and I started having dreams about women and I, I never was attracted to women or anything, but I started having dreams about it. And I even had a dream about her because I just so happened to know the girl, but I didn't know that he was sleeping with her. And, you know, it all came out later on, but she was somebody that I knew from my childhood before I even knew him. So I just thought it was weird, but I'm just saying these spirits, they, um, for me in my life, they creep in and they start trying to graduate you into something even more. You know, I, I mean, I've had the most weirdest dreams now where I'm getting attacked. I'm, 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 I'm sleeping with robots and stuff. This is getting out of hand. You know what I'm saying, you guys? And so I just want to say, it's like a never ending cycle of, 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 of strange stuff. You know what I'm saying? Strange sexual perversions that my mind is trying to take me there. And I'm just a firm believer that, you know, how it talks about if you commit adultery in your mind and your heart, you know, you've done it. And I just be like, hey, man, I already did it. So uh, I might as well. Yeah, that was my excuse. I've already done it in my head. So I might as well, you know, move forward in it. That was my my excuse to sin in the past. And I'm just not going to be. um make continue to make those kind of excuses um and damage myself further if that makes sense okay thank you any other thing before i take it away any other thoughts about this topic all right so Again, I gave you guys the ground rules. You guys did really good in letting people speak and not judging people and let them be be where they are and who they are and how they are. Uh, but we want to look at the questions. I'm gonna read the questions. Uh, there's five of them this time. Uh, one of the questions came in late, but it was already answered, so I threw it in. So that's really just a scripture reference. These are the questions. One was an interpretation question, and I think it is related because it talked about sexuality. The question is, is there any indication of Paul's thorn, which is in 2 Corinthians 12 and seven, um, I hear people saying it was homosexuality or sexual. I, re I relate wanting to go, wanting to do good and doing the opposite to mental health issues. Uh, I'm a Jen Millette. I'm going to mute you because I'm getting some feedback. Unless you have a question. Okay. Uh, let's see. I can't mute you right now. Can you mute yourself? Um, yeah, I think I believe it's Jorge wants to believes that Jorge wants to answer that question if you've completed it. Uh -huh. Uh, no, I'm just reading the question, but Jorge, you got something to say? Okay, he's on mute. I was just getting... Um, 
Oh, go ahead. Um, yes, there's actually a verse, uh, what is it? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I think, uh, 20 through 22. I'm looking at a new King James Version right now. Um, but he talks about how he goes, Paul writes about how he goes to the Jews as a Jew. He goes to those who are under the law as under the law. He goes to those who are not under the law as not under the law. And he goes to those who are weak as weak also that he may be a partaker of the gospel with these people. And so that, that way he could show them Christ. Okay. Um, that is true. That particular uh, portion of the text, but that would not necessarily explain what the thorn in his flesh would be. That would say why he goes to those people because he wants to win people to Christ, but it does not answer what the thorn was, if it was sexual or if it was a mental issue, which I think the question was, what's the thorn? And so, okay, my bad. Okay. No, no, no. That's a good. That's a good observation. That's not. That's that's very good. Uh, keep keeping those scriptures coming. Yeah, I know you a little. You're you're a little preacher over there. <laughs> okay. Um, let me see. The second question. I'm just going to read the questions. I have had this question for a long time and the answers are unexpected. I have so many homosexual friends, they love God and I know God loves them. My question, why have different religious churches said homosexual homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of God? And what part of the Bible is this written? So we'll answer that question. The next sexuality question is, why do people, and I'm reading the questions first, you guys can kind of mull it over why I, um, why I answer, uh, look, you know, the scriptures that, that I'm going to take will uh, seek to answer those questions. Let me change my view here. So um, again, if, if, cause I have my notes in on, on my computer. So if you have uh, uh, any questions again, please just uh, do this thing will not let me get rid of that. Uh, I'll just keep it like that because it's a distraction. Sexuality. Why do people of God get caught up in the sin lifestyle of homosexuals? I mean, really, I'm gonna get a little bigger. Uh, they uh, they uh, really go hard at it. I believe the scripture references David when it says it's it's it says man looks at the outer appearance, but God looks at the heart. Uh, applies to this scenario. So I'll be answering the question: Does that apply to this scenario? Number four. I am not condoning any sin, but if it's bothersome that people go so hard at the LGBTQIA community, but aren't so verbal about abortion or molestation of children, uh, when the former sin is between two consenting individuals, while the later two are against individuals who, uh, that are defenseless ones. The anti-speech against it doesn't seem to balance and it comes across as a witch hunt against the, that community, okay? So that's the LBGT uh, community. And the last one is, I uh, also use the portion of scripture, Galatians, which, which is Galatians 3, uh, 27 to 28, to avoid getting caught up in gender identity. There is no male or female. Uh, that's what Jorge was was uh, quoted a, a, another type about being Jew, Jews and Gentiles, but this is another another rendition of that. Um, is out is 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 that out of context, and could that apply? So this this will be the focus of our our talk today. So the first one is really talking about the thorn in the flesh. I put the whole scripture reference up there. Because really, the thorn in his flesh is really talked in his context. Even though I have received much astounding revelation from God, so to keep me from becoming proud. We why? can't see it, Apostle. Say it again. We can't see it, Apostle. No, I know you can't. 
see it. Oh, okay, my bad. Um, I'm reading my my notes. Okay, I can see the people on the screen. So if you have questions, I can look up and look at you. But I'm reading Second Corinthians. Oh, because I said I'm seeing bold. That's why you're saying that. You want to see my notes? I can share my notes. <laughs> No, no, no. I just thought that you were you were referencing for us to read along. Yeah, 2 Corinthians 12, 7 and through 10. The first portion of that text says, so to keep me from being proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh. So it answers the question right there. When we're looking at scripture and we're, and we're seeking to find the context of what the scripture is talking about, let the scripture identify the scripture. We can use reference text and, and people have so, so, said so many things about what the thorn in his flesh was. But uh, the Bible doesn't say specifically that it was this or it was that, but the thorn was given to him because he God did not want him to be proud. He wanted to keep him humble. He wanted to keep him submissive. I believe the scripture doesn't say what the thorn was because that lets people know in general, you can do these great things for God. You can, you know, move mountains. You can go up into the third heaven. You can write three books, uh, you know, a third, two thirds of the Bible, but you still got issues. <laughs> and, the, and the issues are there to keep you humble. We want to be able to name what this thing is. We want to be able to claim what this thing is, but we need to become humble. Being humble is more important in God than that thorn in your flesh. Can you submit the thorn to God? Can you submit the temptation to God? Can you submit the uh, what Latte said, the, the, the mind things that she's going through that makes her mad. Can you submit those things and become humble? I like this answer in God questions. It says this, I'll just read it since it's a kind of a quote. Many explanations have been put forward, but whether Paul was refers to something physical, spiritual, emotional affliction, or something else entirely uh, has never been answered satisfactorily satisfactory some more people pop some more popular theories of the thorns interpretation include temptation chronic eye problem malaria migraine epilepsy and and speech disability some even has says the thorn is a person or uh, alexander who's the coppersmith who paul said that he did him great harm he did great harm to his ministry no one can really say what the thorn in the flesh was, but the source of the pain is real. And that's what I want us to understand in all of this. And, and, and people dancing on the strip, people that are uh, have alternative lifestyles, all of these things are an expression of some type of, of pain or some type of issue. Now, I have to say not everyone's going to believe that, but you have to understand not everyone believes the Bible. So we're not talking about, I'm not answering this question to people that do not believe the Bible. I'm answering this question from people that says the Bible is the source of their faith. Because if the Bible is not the source of your faith, then you're not going to believe anything that I say because the Bible's not true. And I'm actually going to show you uh, uh, something that... Um, Little take on the alluded to where I, I try I look at both sides when I'm doing the research to to answer these questions because it's I, I want to get a full give you guys a full picture because we have to begin to minister to the whole person. We can't look at a person and say, oh, that's disgusting. Oh, that's nasty. Oh no, you can't do that. We have to minister love to people. And before I continue to go on, I'm gonna say this a couple of times. We have to separate the person from the act. The person and the act are two separate things. And many times when we come from brokenness and we come from a place of hurt and we come from a place of rejection and we come from a place of the world, who we are and what we do are the same. And so if I do homosexual acts, I am a homosexual. That's who I am. That's my identity. Is it? Is, is that your identity? Uh, we have to separate the act from the individual. 
Because when we begin to separate the act from the individual, we can begin to minister and heal the individual. And then God can begin to think about the things that needs to be done with the acts that we all do. Cussing at people, fornicating, adultery, molesting people, uh, you know, all, all the acts that we do. Because the truth of the matter is, it's all sin. And God came to wash away the sin so that he can take the person because the person wins. So we have to begin as Christians to separate people's actions from their identity because my identity is not based on my actions. My actions are based on a flesh that has fallen and I do things that my flesh wants or what I'm trained to do or what I'm, my habits are formed to do. But those actions can change if we understand who we are. If we really get our identity, we can begin to work on our actions. Like Jorge said, he's a, his actions are, he's attracted to males, but he's celibate. He's not performing the acts, but he still has this struggle in his flesh, but he's not acting on the struggle, okay? I feel like I want to go steal every time I go in the store. I feel like it. That's the act that I want to commit. But I don't commit the act. But but I my, my flesh wants to commit the act. But I'm choosing not to. I'm making a choice to, to, to stay holy. Even though my body and my, and my mind wants to do something, I'm making a choice not to. Can't we give people the freedom to, to, to love them where they are and then begin to work with their choices? As Christians, it says in that thing, love what God loves and hate what God hates. God doesn't hate homosexuals. He doesn't hate liars. Well, actually, he hates the lie. He hates his host, as, as, as Jorge said, the act, but does he hate the person? We hate, it seems like, the church is so negative against all of these things. Latay said it, ill, molestation or ill, that, that just makes my stomach sick. And I use that picture of the children, the, the, uh, the comic pictures of all the gay and, and all the, the, the rainbow flag and all, because it was intentional. Because you have a system that's an operation to destroy our children, to destroy, hey, we have a system that's in place to destroy us as adults. We have a system that's working against the system of God and as kingdom citizens, we have to take our authority back and begin to use it as a hammer to begin to destroy first all the acts in my life that goes against the word of God. And I got plenty because in that list of homosexuality, sexual immorality, you've got greed. I'm overweight. So am I going to hell because I'm overweight? Because I, I choose to, to overindulge? Are you trying to tell me I'm going to hell? Now, there's work that we're doing. I'm abstaining, I'm dieting, I'm exercising. I'm, I'm consciously working on it. Now you have people that are not consciously working on anything. They're doing it and they're doing it and they don't even care about God. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the ones who are in this struggle. This struggle where they, they uh, you know, Jorge said that he, 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 he has, he is attracted to men but he is not uh, engaging in his attraction. But you have people that are attracted to men or attracted to women and engaging in it. Now, th those are two separate things. We have to begin in both instances, however, love the person, hate the sin. We first have to identify what sin is. And the sin in our own life, deal with it. And then help people deal with the sin that's happening in their life. 
Is that making sense? Yes. Paul addresses sexuality and he talks about the flesh. The, the flesh equates to desires that run contrary to God, not only in sexual activity, but every behavior, any act, any act that's opposed, contrary to what God requires. Moderation is what God requires. And in that text, in the text that has all of those acts of the flesh, they're not all sexual, but they're contrary. All of those things have to be under, under subjection. We don't go around a people 300 pounds overweight saying you're going to hell because you're 300 pounds overweight. But Glutton is in the list of things that he hates. Why are we saying that? Not saying that to that person. We have to understand that we have to pay an account for every thought and every deed that we do. And since we do, that should give us grace to deal with people on this spectrum of doing things that are contrary to the things of God. I have no heaven or no hell to put anyone. I never know what, what God is going to do with a person's last breath. I can have a person that's walking holy, as holy as thou, but something can trip or, trick in their life and they just totally go off the handle and throw God away. We have to treat people with honor, dignity, and respect. We don't have to treat the sin with honor, dignity, and respect. Remember, God created us as priests to make sacrifices, but he also made us kings so that we can begin to judge and make war. We need to come alongside of Jorge and people that are struggling with greed or, or and, and, and help war with their acts. And so their acts, so that their thought process and the actions that they're uh, abstaining from no longer becomes an issue because the issue has been removed. Why can't we come alongside people like that? Do sexual issues or mental issues humble us? They can, they often do, but sometimes they don't. We look at the struggle people face to hinder their lives and ministry when the point to be taken mm -hmm. is the struggle made him who he was. He makes us. The struggle that Paul had made him who he was. Whatever the struggle is, it could have been mental illness. It could have been whatever. It couldn't have been homosexuality because Paul talks about homosexuality and sexual sin. And if, if that were the case, that would say that God was using a hypocrite to write this portion of the text. So I don't believe the thorn in his flesh was sexual. Why? To sexual sin, Paul writes this. Run from, run from sexual sin. No other sin is clearly affects the body as the one as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and who's given to you by God? Do not belong, you do not belong to yourself. For God brought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. So I don't believe the thorn could have been uh, sexual in Paul's body because he understood that it was a temple of God. Well, I understand my body is a temple of God, but I still eat Twinkies. I actually don't eat Twinkies, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I do things and eat things I'm not supposed to, even though I know this is a temple of God. So even though you know this is a temple, we defile our own self. We defile our own self. Why? Because of the desires that are in our flesh. That's why we have to kill our flesh daily. That's why you have to walk along people so that they can kill what's in their flesh so that they can live holy. We talked about that last week where God has declared you holy and now we're walking it out so that we become what God said. So, could it, so it couldn't have been because he would have been dishonoring God if it was a sexual sin. Also, also said this about illness. I plead with you, brothers and sisters, become like me, for I for I became like you, 
Uh, you did me no wrong. And he goes on to talk about the illness. Uh, I was, I was, an, I, let me just read it. As you know, it was because of an illness that I first preached the gospel to you. And even though my illness was a trial to you, you did not treat me with contempt or scorn. Instead, you welcomed me as if I were an angel of God, as if I were Jesus Christ himself. Where then is your blessing for me now? I can testify that if I, if you could done so, you would have torn your eyes out and given them to me. Have I now become your enemy by telling you the truth? This is Galatians 4, 12 through 16. So Paul is ministering illness. And so Whatever the issue and the problem that he is, he's ministering through that time. He's ministering through that, that, that thorn. But everyone looking at that thorn could judge him. But this particular church didn't judge him for the illness that he had. Do we judge people with mental illness? Do we judge people that have physical illnesses? We have to actually learn to treat physical illness and mental illnesses the same. We don't say for somebody that broke their leg, don't go to the doctor and don't take medicine. But if someone has mental illness, we tell them, don't go to a psychiatrist, don't take any medicine. What's the difference? Isn't it still the body? Didn't Christ make the body? Yeah, I can pray for my leg to heal. I can pray for my mind to heal. But then... I told y'all the story where I had the migraine for three days and I'm praying. Da, 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 da. Uh, I had to go away. I'm praying. I got faith. Laying hands on myself. And after the third day, God said, girl, go take an aspirin. Within five minutes. <laughs> it was gone. The migraine was gone. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> You know what that taught me? Mm -hmm. Can't be so religious. Yeah. Yeah. And I want miracles for everything. That's I tell you that day, that aspirin was a miracle. <laughs> 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 so whatever the illness, the people saw him as an angel. Will people say that about you and your mental illness or in your physical illness? Or are we just hush and push people away? because they're bipolar, because they're schizophrenia, schizophrenia disorder, because they're hearing, you know, hearing void. And do we push those people away and they're crazy? Anyway, brief answer, the context I've already told you. Paul had been in the third heaven with God, starting churches in several areas in the world, casting out demons, healing people, and coming against greatest thinkers of his day to stop him from getting a big head or thinking the ministry was all about him god allowed satan to torment his flesh you know god can allow temptations to come to see if you're going to stand up against temptation we have to make a choice will we stand or will we submit and when we submit to the temptation we begin to act on our weaknesses and not God's strength. Because God says when we are weak, he makes us strong. But many times we don't even think about it. It's just an autopilot. This is an autopilot. This is just who I am. That just really ticks me off. Why? Because God says in his word, we're a new creation. The old has passed away. I make all things new. So I don't care that's how I was when I was in the hood. I understand how I acted when I was in the hood. And I can still say, I can cuss you out and I can cut you with a knife because that's who I was. But that's who I was. That's not who I am. I will cut you with a knife, but it's the word of God. And I'm going to use that knife as a sword to help cleanse you, but not to destroy you. You can't say who you were because if he's making you new, who you were doesn't make a difference. It's who you, who you're becoming, which is what the bride of Christ. You're becoming a bride. <laughs> so the context matters to the interpretation. So let the scripture, as I said, interpret the scripture. 
This is the one that's really a short answer uh, about, I've heard this question about why have different church, different religious churches said homosexuality will not inherit the kingdom of God? And what part of the Bible is that in? Well, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10 actually says it. Ye know not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, or nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. That's all this uh, stuff we'll be talking about, you know, uh, abuses of yourself with, with themselves could be something like masturbation. It's, uh, uh, you know, orgies and, and all those types of things, um, because these are all sins that we take on our body, nor thieves, nor covetedness, nor drunkards, nor rivals, nor exhorters shall inherit the kingdom of God. So that's how come religious people and religious churches say that. But my, my suggestion is, my thought is, a lot of people is not going <laughs> to inherit the kingdom of God. Our job is not to tell people who's going to hell. Our job is to make a case for people to go to heaven. Stop judging people and condemning them to hell because God can change a heart in a twinkling of an eye. But guess what? He's going to use you to do it. And if I walk up to, I walk up to Shorty and say, just, you just this, you just that, you, you, you drinking, you, you smoking, you, you, you got this, you got that. Any hope to come to Christ? To go ahead and, and, and say, "Well, you know, you you're you you like heaven, and you're going to heaven." Well, how is that going to make Jorge not like feel bad and depressed? I mean, Jorge will probably stand up and say something to you, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the point yeah. of the matter is. Is that a witness? Is that a witness of Jesus Christ? Didn't Christ say to the woman caught in the act of adultery where the man was actually let go to go sin no more? He said, don't do it anymore. Don't do the act anymore. She was still labeled as an adulteress, but he said the act, don't do it anymore because the act, the action of, 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 of acting on those things makes the difference. So we, the churches do say that, but I pray KBI that we don't condemn people to hell because of how they're living. Because I tell you, my old life, I would have been and had been condemned to hell. I told you when I go home, these are the two questions that are, I get. Charlene, what's the next country you going to? Because yeah. they see Facebook. Right. Family that don't have Facebook, this is their question. Charlene, <laughs> I can't hear you. We didn't hear you. You went in and out. When's the last time you beat somebody up? They ask me if they don't have Facebook. If they have Facebook, they're asking me, what country am I going to? The question Man. really is, who do you say you are? And I say that I am in Christ Jesus. And in Christ Jesus, I am going to love the sinner, but I'm going to fight that that sin is out of people's life. I want to fight that Jorge won't have the struggle. I want to fight so that he he doesn't have to, 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 to have to defend himself because whatever he wants or whatever Shorty wants or whatever Pauline wants or whatever any of you guys want, that's not like God. I want to come alongside of you and fight with you so that act is going out of your life. That is how Christians are supposed to act. So I am sorry that we haven't acted that way. We have not been a good witness for Jesus Christ. The KBI, and I'm so glad when I was out of town and we had the person that came in that was drunk, that y'all didn't throw them out, that you know my heart. And I don't care if they come in drunk. I don't care if they come in half naked. Love on them where they are. And y'all accepted the person. And I said, praise God, you know my heart, because that's the heart of God. He doesn't want to throw anybody out. Do you understand that? Does that hopefully that answers the, the question. 
for where it is in the Bible, but more importantly, how do you respond as a soldier of Christ, as a believer in Christ? This is another one where I got, kind of got two views of um, the, the marriage, sexuality. Why do people get so caught up on the life or, or lifestyle of homosexuality? And people really go hard at homosexual and talking about David's uh, man after his own heart. So the, the thing about this, this text and this question about why people go so hard, I'll answer that first question against people that are uh, have lifestyle of homosexuality and we and they go into the marriage um in the church in the new testament it talks about lesbianism and homosexuality both described as vile um yes you don't get clean jorge says before you take a shower you gotta actually be dirty to get in the shower and a lot of a lot of us that have these acts are dirty and you we can be washed, but that washing is progressive. It may not be instantaneous. I've had people who have been in various lifestyles that has given them up all, all at once. And I've had them that progressively they fell back and they went, they fell back. And they're still making their way. And then it, 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 like every like every sin that we have, it's, it, it can be suddenly, but it can also be progressive. We have to be yeah. good to understand. We have to walk with people. Go ahead, Lute. Amen. Go ahead, Lute. So um, although I've never been with a woman or anything like that, I was a, a, a fornicator and adulterer. Um, you know, I, I was going around declaring because, you know, I wasn't sexually active for this certain amount of time that I'm delivered, I'm delivered, I'm delivered. And when Jorge said the thing about the shower just brought me back to my thought process that I was going to say earlier, which is about the maintenance of deliverance, you know, um, just because I'm delivered, uh, just because I'm, I'm declaring this deliverance and I'm, I'm, I'm not sleeping with anybody, I'm not doing this activity. And then I have this moment of, which is, you know, going into your next teaching of fantasy or thought crossing my mind, or I feel like I need, this is a need that I have at to, 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 um, to, to, to touch on, to touch myself sexually, you know, it's still to me, to me, it's the same thing. You know, I don't, I, I can't speak for how everybody else is feeling about it. And I, and I don't want to try to force anything, but I'm going about the feeling of conviction that comes for me, the feeling that, Hey, this is still a sin. It doesn't matter that I'm not, you know, hunched up with somebody or whatever. Um, but the, the whole thing is I'm still doing the activity of it. It's like replacing a cigarette with a patch or something or replacing a gun with a knife. I killed him, but it wasn't as bad or you get what I'm saying? Like it, it's, it, it bothers me because also in the scripture, it says all liars will have their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is second death. Okay. But then the scripture says that everybody has lied, right? It says that everybody has lied. So we're not, we're not, like you said, we're not under that sin, that act that you said, we're not stuck under that. That's not defining us. What we did, we've done that. We repent, we move forward. But then here comes the shower analogy. Just because I take, took a shower yesterday, I'm not so, so fresh today or tomorrow. It's getting funky up in here. You know what I'm saying? And so you have to continue and to continue and to continue getting clean you know what i mean it's like you know it's an ongoing thing it's not just hey i'm dirty let me get this shower no it's an ongoing thing every day the maintenance of it and that's where i'm at with it although i'm, I'm i've never been with a woman i don't even like them types of thoughts coming up uh you know i don't i don't i've never uh, messed with no dang robot or any of that mess but i i want those thoughts to become captive and i want those captive thoughts to to the the word of god to captivate my mind and to to put my body under subjection so that they don't even pop up. I don't want them little pop-ups and little advertisements or whatever. You know, I want that out of there. I just don't like the, the primary focus on homosexuality and lesbianism. Why are you, because I'm the type of, I don't like bullies. 
I fought bullies and I beat bullies down be because you're not, I, 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 I'm about justice and I'm about being fair. So don't be trying to punk people and don't be trying to down people um, because you think that your sin don't stink when all sin, you know, it all stinks in the nostrils of God. And so it's just like, why is it so hyper? I'm the one that wrote that question. Why is it honing in on the lesbian people and you got, and you got these murderers up in the but church. I'm a murderer, you guys. I had, I had, I had abortions. So why y'all ain't on my back like that? Why are you messing with the? Why are you messing with my little homie? That's 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 a that's a that's a, 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 a feminine acting man who who to me is a weaker. This person is a weaker person. Why are you picking on my little homie? Like that's how I feel. Like get off. Can of I answer the question, Mrs. Lee? Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay so when we think about why people christians are on the homosexual lifestyle so much is because the bible says uh, 1 24 to 27 that it's a vile passion and remember you're supposed to hate what god hates and love what god loves the problem well it also says both were against the nature and shame and an abomination to God. And so people, Christians, hate homosexuality because it's an abomination to God. So they're 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 coming down on that hatred. A such behavior is in the list of sins that will not inherit the kingdom of God. We've already talked about that. The Bible is clear and consistent throughout every period that such behavior clearly is condemned and not made by God as um, some would believe. So now this is the other side. This is taken from a person, and I guess you will know their, their take on the Bible. According to the Bible, marriage must be in the same faith. Not only should a wife be subordinate, uh, but she must prove her virginity lest she be stoned. This comes from out of Deuteronomy. Marriage should be arranged if a woman's husband dies without having a son, that uh, she must marry his brother and have intercourse with him until they have a son. Many of the men of God, he has that in quotes, or she has that in quotes, were not only married, but had at least one concubine. And they list Abraham, Caleb, and Saul, Solomon. Um, God frequently blessed Polymnicus. Esau, Jacob, Gideon, David, and a uh, Solomon. So their conclusion of the Bible is: so forgive me if I'm not uh, interested in your in your marriage. So people use the Bible to say, "Go to hell! You're going to go to hell because of this." And people use the same Bible and say, "I'm not going to listen to your God because these rules are too hard. That these rules are don't make sense." So people are hard on people that are homosexuality because, because God calls it an abomination. But at the, and at the same time, um, we're doing an abomination because it says love your neighbor as you love yourself. And telling somebody that they're going to hell uh, is not really showing love. I remember I was in Haiti and we were doing an outreach and I was with the leader. He knocked on these Haitian door, and these were Satan worshipers. I mean, they they tell you we worship Satan, and they were up in the villages, and they say Satan is the one that provides their food. So you knock on the people's door, and they said, uh, "If you don't come to Jesus, you're going to hell." I'm like, what kind of evangelistic outreach is this? And they were hard and people, all this stuff. I'm like, can I get on another team? Yeah. Because this is not the law. Yeah. It's the same thing we do to people when we come down on them and say, you're going to hell because you're sleeping with a man and you're going to hell because you're sleeping with... Okay. If a person acts and who the person is, you, you're you combining them yeah. because you're condemning that person's soul to hell for the act. Why don't you love the person and deal with the sin once the person knows you love them. I can tell you from experience again, I've had a lot more success with people 
when I separated their acts mm -hmm. from who they were, gave that person identity, gave that person honor, gave that person respect, then began to remove the shame. I didn't have to say anything about their act. They wanted to do it themselves. I had a girl call me a couple weeks ago. Matter of fact, she hasn't called me in a couple weeks. Mm. She was a met her in prison. She was in there for years. And she called me crying. She was a, a dude, girl, that went to a guy. And she called me and said, Mom, I don't want to be a man anymore. I want to be a girl. And I said, you've always been a girl. Mm. He says, will you help me? Will you walk through this with me? God conviction can change a person. You just got to be there. So when they're ready to, to move, they will call and say, mom, can you help me? And I'm not going to judge them and say, no, it's about time. Yeah. <laughs> you just love them. Yeah. Because it was love that had to call me yeah. to say, I'm ready. That's right. Just continue to pray for them. The New Testament and the Old Testament speaks of that sin and others are overlooked. Adultery, fornication, or et cetera. And I have, I'll send you this. Uh, so uh, I'm running out of time, but I'll send you the scriptures in the New Testament that talks about forbidding of homosexuality and all this stuff. But it also has adulterers and, and all those other sins that are in there that, that we have to treat them. And I think we talked about that enough. We have to treat them both the same as long as we separate the person from the sin. The text being compared is about judging or making a decision based on the heart. We're going back to the second part of that question. Why first question, why people judge them so harshly? Because people are uh, judgmental and, they're, and they haven't learned to separate the sin from the sinner. We love the sinner, but we don't love the sin. Our job as Christian is to love people. Right. Love people to a place where they can want to honor themselves and honor God with not only their bodies, but their whole soul. That is our job, guys. Our God, our job. Now, there is a time, then you all know, I pray judicial prayers against people that write laws and legislate things that are against the will of God so that our children and our population, I mean, I was just talking to Shorty, and they have building houses so people can get locked up in their houses and do drugs. They can yeah. stay on the street. Yeah. Why do you give them a key to overdose in a house that's paid by government? Yeah. Anyway, that's, yeah. that's crazy. Mm -hmm. the, oh, the second part of the question. Mm -hmm. But the Lord told Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or his height. For I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. So God looks, God looked um, good to, uh, what looked good to, to men, God rejects. And so this thing about the outward appearance and this thing of David, David is talking, uh, you can't compare looking at the outward appearance and saying this guy's a homosexual or, or lesbian or whatever else you're saying about the person. And let, me, let me stop there. Now, now, in what the world are you in where the first thing you find out about a person is who they're sleeping with? <laughs> Why is that the first thing when you think about homosexual? I want to know your name. I want to know where you came from. That should not be the focal point of this meeting. The focal point of this meeting should be the relationship, not who they're laying with. That, that's, you know, you don't come up to me and say, well, are, are you celibate? Are you sleeping with 16 people? That's not your first thing. Your first thing is to ask me what my name is. When you see someone that's different. If that's the first thing name. on your... Go ahead, go if, ahead, Jorge. If that's the first thing on your mind, that could be a lustful spirit. Well, I mean, a lot of times it's the outer appearance. So when you come out and they, a person looks effeminate or, they, or they're walking around or cross-dressed or gay, the first thing you're going to think is that they're sleeping with somebody, they're dirty, God hates them, and then say, throw them away. I'm talking about Christians, right? 
I want to know why my dentist office wanted to know my sexuality. Is that affecting my teeth? Is it yeah. really? This is not appropriate conversation at the dentist. I don't get it. And I just told them, I'm, I'm choosing not to answer this question because it's none of your business. Sexuality should not be the first question that we ask people. That should be their name. How are you doing? But this particular question, judging the King James Version, oh, come down. Uh, is looking to see and distinguish and observing and watching or learning about the heart of a person. God is seeking obedience to his word. So it applies, but what, what's in a man's heart? So when you look at a person, it's not the outer appearance, it's his obedience. God wants the obedience of that person. So you cannot say that someone who's not following the word, you can't apply this text. Because that person that's not following God's word is not being obedient to God's word. So I wouldn't use this as a proof text for that because if they're outwardly being disobedient, they're not a person after God's own heart. They're outwardly being a, a disobedient. Now, David, with all the hell that he raised in the kingdom, the reason why he was a man after God's own heart, because he repented. If you're totally disobedient to God and you're not even thinking about God, you can't have a heart after God because you're not even thinking about him. And so I would not use this proof text to someone struggling in homosexuality simply because you don't know that person's heart stance. You don't know if they're being obedient to God. And a lot of times um, they don't believe that the Bible says homosexual is wrong. Um, and so you, 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 you can't use that heart text on that particular one. As a Christian, we must love the person and get to know them. I've already talked about that. Um, we have to treat people the same no matter if they're fornicators and liars. People who reject the Bible will reject your view of the Bible. People who accept your view of the Bible and they accept it, they will be open to change. That's really the bottom line. Separate the person from the act, get to know the person, and just love the person <laughs> where they are. The goal for all Christians is to look like Christ. If Christ does not represent uh, any behavior or, dis or, or belief, the person must look at their heart to determine their obedience. Repentance is the change. Repentance changes everything. But again, the first question that you ask someone caught up in sin is not about uh, repentance. Get to know them, get to know their names, you get to know who they are. Okay, so hopefully, looks like we lost Lete. Uh, so hopefully, she'll see the recording and that answers the question. I'm here. Oh, okay. I it thought... froze up a little bit, but that was it. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, well, we lost a couple people, but that's all right. Um, sexuality, I'm not condoning any sin, but it is bothering that people go so hard. So it's the same type of thing. As stated in the scripture number two, all sexual immorality is wrong. It doesn't really matter what type of sexual immorality it is. It's all wrong. People are hard on the communities they don't understand. So I would say, get to know the community, get to know the homosexual, get to know the person that molested people, get to, get to know the person who had abortion, get to know someone who's, who's in the life and in the, in the LBT uh, community, get to know people, just get to know people. <laughs> That's going to make the difference as a Christian. Because now we're not one of those Christians that are judging people. We can actually become someone we can talk to and be a friend. God allowed or says the Bible does not state that God allowed or permitted concubines. That was part of the culture. And um, here's two things to keep in mind. God disapproves of marriages dealing with concubines. Um, the fact that they that legal perversion was made for concubine does not mean that God approved it. Just because it was in the law to try to put some strings and try to put his design for marriage is back in Genesis. One man, one woman. But because of what we're doing and because of what they were doing, it's just like now. We have a society that the laws have said 
that you can marry whoever you want to, that you can have as many wives as you want to, you can do whatever you want to. But that doesn't mean that God's word has not changed. The purpose of the law, remember, the purpose of the law was to point out sin. We have to understand that that it's the sin that God wants us to understand. And so whenever that law, he was saying that you're choosing to, to, to have multiple wives when I've already told you that you're gonna leave your mother and father and cling to your wife, that is God's model. God is coming back for one bride without spot or wrinkle. When we think about uh, sex and sexual sin, it's equal to idolatry. That's what Hosea is about. When you have multiple mates, you're talking about high, high, uh, idolatry. And it doesn't matter if, that, if you're a man having multiple men or a man having multiple women or a man who thinks they're a woman have a man who thinks he's a woman that's dating a woman who thinks she's a man. Tell me that's not confusing. I've seen that couple. they yeah. viral. The bottom line is... I, that, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Ray. I just want to say like i am a someone that is attracted to men but at the same time like the transgender and the plus community i don't fully understand that because it's not something that fits within my beliefs because i believe that jesus is my lord and savior and so i just don't understand that so what hinders you, Jorge, from, you hear all these scriptures, you know the scriptures, you know the scriptures, you know the Bible, and you're choosing to abstain, but the attraction, how, how do you and how can you counsel or speak to Christians that will look down on you because you make a statement that I'm attracted to them? Um... Well, with me being attracted to men as long as I've been attracted to men, if God were to take that completely away from me right now with just a snap of his fingers, I would not know how to act in this world. And so it's been a gradual process. I first accepted Jesus into my life back in 2016. I was 21 years old. Before then, I stepped forward into a church uh, maybe two, three times, if mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I accepted him into my life, it was, there was just this fire that erupted inside of me. And there's no other words to describe it. But I knew that he was there and I knew that he's been with me ever since. Um, so I'm sorry, I forgot the original question. How could you help Christians who would condemn you for your progressive? I know how progressive well, your, your steps have been because we've been walking with you, but other people don't understand that. They think right now you should change and give up everything, even the desire for men. Well, um, I would just ask, what is, like, don't tell me right now, but uh, just think to yourself, what is that little deep, dark uh, little room that you have within yourself mm -hmm. that you say that this is my little thing and God, you can't have this? Mm -hmm. what, is, what is that little thing that you say that you're protecting? And how would you give that up? What, what steps would you take? If he was to take that away from you right now, do you think that you would be able to even form a sentence? Do you think that you'd be able to walk? Like, no, these things are gradual. Like, slowly, um, I, I'll put it out here. Uh, I was 100% just attracted to men. Ever since 2016, um, it's slowly been going the other way. To where I have actually been with women and I do enjoy it. And so 
It's just something that God just has to work through with you. There's layers to everyone. You just have to figure out what your layer is. You know, denial and figuring out that you have denial is the first step to any problem. Thank you for that, for that honesty. As I was praying about people that I knew in the community that uh, would come on the line and give that perspective mm -hmm. in a way without being offensive or offended, God brought Jorge to my mind and I texted him and asked him and he was like, sure, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And uh, I was, I was glad because I think we need to hear this perspective because He's a great man of God and he struggles just like any of us struggle. His struggle is like he's saying is no different. And I've seen so many improvements in him, just like I've seen improvements in Sharon and, and, and Lotte and David and, 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 you know, all of you have made improvements and that's what we're in each other's lives for to make those progressive steps. Cause like we all know in deliverance and Jorge knows as well, that everything's about the layers we cannot give up everything. Shorty, you remember that. You're not going to give up everything once. It's one thing at a time. You may fall back tomorrow, yeah. but don't give up because you fall back. Because sure. there's a layer that's going to be removed as you stay persistent and yeah. in, in getting clean and getting rid of all these other things that we're going to be working with. Yeah. Don't give up because it doesn't, let's what they say, go all at once because you would actually lose your mind. It actually says in the Bible that he takes a little bit here, a little, there, a little, because we can begin to get a deliverance. You got to walk free into that area of deliverance. You yeah. get another layer of deliverance, you walk free in yeah. that level. Because if he was, a, now there are things. He took uh, smoking the last time all yeah. away. Drinking, he took away in one in one foul swoop. Yeah. I, I, you know, well, no, that wasn't true either. I kept yeah. going back to that. I, I don't know anything he's saying. Yeah. <laughs> but I know he did something one foul swoop. But most often it's one layer at a time. Okay. Temptation is what the issue is. Temptation to engage in homosexuality, temptation to, to engage in, in stealing and lying and all of these things are a temptation that we have to begin to fight. I'm not going to read through that. I'm going to give you these notes. So some victory. The first thing, and Jorge kind of spoke to that, confess your sin to God, whatever the sin is, confess it. That's your step for victory. Ask God to cleanse you, to renew your mind, to transform your mind. Because all of these acts start in your mind. If you can, if you can get your mind renewed, you can get your actions renewed. Uh, ask God to fill your mind with things that are true, that are honorable, that are just, that are pure. You know, a lot of times people are in these situations because they've been abused, they've been raped, they've been molested, they've been uh, saw so much death, death, hell in the grave, and and you think that you can come along and just say you're going to hell? Do you actually know? That when, when I was out there, I, I thought I was living hell. So you tell me I'm going to hell really didn't help me because I was right there. It didn't matter. So that's really not a really good witnessing tool, particularly when people are ready to die anyway. That's not really a good witnessing tool, telling people they're going to hell when they've been living in hell. That's not really a good thing. You, 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 you don't understand that that's really not good. Listen to possess your body. Learn to possess your body. Possess it. For holiness, that you only want your body for holiness. Understand the proper meaning of sex and rely on your spouse alone. Let me put a point there. It doesn't matter if you're, what state you're in, who you're sleeping with. If you're not married, God considers it all sin. Marriage is meant for marriage. And the reason is because when that first sin, uh, when that first sex act happened and the woman uh, breaks blood, there's a connection that happens in the body that's supposed to be permanent. When you have so many different sex partners, all of those sex partners begins to change who you are and you begin to change and make different decisions about your life and you get all kind of jacked up. Uh, things that this person's doing, you're now doing. You're like, well, I would never do that. Why are you doing it? Because of that transfer. That transfer was supposed to get you linked to that person so you would be linked for life. And when we have all of this coupling, that's why all those soul ties need to be broken. Stay pure, stay holy, 
I'm telling you, pray for holiness that he would, you, he would help you to contain your body. Realize that if you walk in the spirit, you will not be fulfilled with the lust of the flesh. And that's what it is, the lust of the flesh. And we'll talk more about that next week. Take practice, practical steps to reduce your exposure to porn, to pornography images, going into sex bars, going into areas where you know you're going to fall. Don't go in those areas. It's, you know, stay clean. Remember, if people don't um, see uh, that, you, that they are living in sin, they will not understand why you say they're living in sin. You can't make people see that they're living in sin. If I told Sharon that um, living a life without fear is a sinful, and she's like, this is just how I am. What are you talking about? It's not sinful. It's just the way it is. They can't see it. So you can't, you, you have to work with people. Now, instead of coming to Sharon and saying, you know, having a life of fear is sinful, I'm going to say, Sharon, you are a woman of faith, but I'm going to pray in the spirit when I'm away from her. God, remove the spirit of fear from her. Let her begin to walk. And I will begin to war against that thing that is holding her down so that she can see that fear is not a good thing. That's how you walk with people. That's how you help people. I'm going to skip the rest of this. Like I said, I'll mail this out. Um, and even the last question, I'm going to do it really fast because we are out of time at 8.30. Interpretation. I also use the, this portion of scripture, which is Galatians 27 and 8, to avoid getting caught up in gender identity. There is no male or female. Um, this is the Galatians text. I'm going to, to uh, send what Wikipedia says, um, but... And I'm going to send you the PowerPoint that I have because I'm not going to have time to do that. Um, but really, I, what I'm going to show you is this. There's two wars that are happening, self-identity or Christ identity. When you have identity confusion, it doesn't really matter if it's gender or whatever else. You have an identity confusion. We have to know as Christians, our identity is founded in Jesus Christ. That is the identity that we have to get locked in. Any other identity is based on self. Who is the throne of your heart? That throne of your heart is going to determine who your identity is. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to send you the PowerPoint where it's going to talk about your identity, what Christ's identity is, what a self-identity is, so that you can identify which chart that you are on and begin to move towards Christ's identity. Because if you don't walk in Christ's identity, you will conform to a false identity. No matter what the identity is, gender, race, what, what doesn't matter. You can identify as a pig. It doesn't really make you a pig. It's because you identify with one. We have to understand in Christ, you live, move, and have your being. If you self-regulate your structure and your identity, you are the God of that structure and that structure is gonna fall. So I'll, I'll send those pictures. Um, and I'm also gonna send you this text where it talks about, we gotta put off the old man and put on the new man. The bottom line from the sexuality, at least part one is this. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we live for the Lord. We have to understand our bodies are a temple of the holy God. And if we want to be holy, we have to only put things around us that are holy. Do, do you not know that your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you received? You are not your own. And when you self-identify, you're making yourself God. You have to take the identity of Christ. So the question really is, who are you living for? Whom are you living for? Are you living for yourself? Or are you living for your Savior? I know I rushed through this, particularly in the last two questions, but I do have the PowerPoint that I'll send you, and I will uh, send out this text so that you have it, and you can look at these slides and, um, you know, answer that last question for yourself about identity. Your identity is based on Christ, not on the identity, the gender identity stuff. I am more than a female. As a matter of fact, if you identify yourself as they, he, them, I identify myself as a follower of Jesus Christ. All these other things don't move me. Are there any questions, comments, or concerns? This is a great lesson. 
my comment was about someone else's company. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, Shorty was saying it was a great I, lesson. I heard that was a great lesson. Uh-huh. Yeah. Amen. I had a question. I had a comment just about the layers. And uh -huh. it's it's in reference to me being delivered from violent behaviors. Uh -huh. And how um, you know, it started with me relinquishing my weapon, which I would like back. But I'm just saying, because I moved out of the house. So I'm saying I'm not under the, the Jasmine house rules anymore. Yeah, but I, I don't want you that. using a weapon. <laughs> and so I relinquished it, you know, but also the ability to be able to take an assault and not hit back with practicing with my sister. You know what I'm saying? And the ability to not react to a threat, thinking up. Oh, acting out of fear and responding. I'm not there. I, that dark thing that Jorge talked about, that dark thing is murder. That dark thing in my heart is a vengeance for the people that killed my family members that I would like to see not breathing anymore for what they did. And I'm going to continue to confess that because it's a deep down hurt. And I'm going to continue to say, Lord, help me and deliver me. But what he has me stuck on is Galatians 5 and then the beginning of Galatians 6, which is uh, talking about the fruits of the spirit. You know, and, you know, and, and, um, you know, and if I see someone overtaken in a fall, don't be conceited, don't judge them, but restore them, you know, in a fault. But um, that's what he has me on. He has me keeping my mind on that spiritual thing, that Galatians 5, that spiritual thing. He's having me keep that every time I get ready to try to teach something they got me teaching on Sunday nights at the church I go to. He takes me right back to Galatians 5. And gives me another perspective on the same scriptures. So that's just kind of him just wrapping me with, like you said, putting the, those good things around us and in us to to get that deep dark thing that I that I that I haven't let, let go of that 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 want to that desire for for vengeance to be taken on the lives of the people that took my family from me. So um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to um, confess that out loud and bring that into the light. And and little by little, I see some of those attributes leaving me. And so I thank God for even a small, small progression. Yeah, yeah. Well, we probably um, need to do something because it's enough people. I heard you, Jorge, that, Taya. that we deal with that are in the gang life that we can kind of help them out of that spirit of murder and that spirit of vengeance. So if you have any questions around that, send that because we do have a, a several people that are in gangs that they might benefit from that change of mind, that, 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 that mentality. Go ahead, Jorge. Um, all I was going to just say is just, Latte, if you ever want to talk and just, you know, vent, I'm always here. Oh, you can tell I want to talk. I, I could tell. <laughs> well, I don't know who talks more, Jorge or Latte. He's like, uh, y'all both can talk. Loud, like loud, it. loud, loud. No, I think Jorge kind of... I think all three of them will have a match. <laughs> they all three like to talk. Jorge called me and said, I want to I want to ask you a question. I think we're on the phone for three hours. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. Just about that. <laughs> I had a lot of questions. I know. I just... Send them in, Jorge. Send them in. Okay. Well, let my brother Lyle know I didn't see him and I missed him today. Yeah, he's at, work. he's at work. Any other questions for this before I turn the tape off? Father, we thank you. We thank you for those that have heard this word. Let us remember that we love you regardless of the label, regardless of how you call yourself or see yourself. God loves you. but And we love you. Yes. But we don't have to love what you do. I don't have to love that someone abuses me. I don't have to love that, that you're coming after me to destroy my family. I don't have to love that. But I, I can love you, but hate what you do. Yes. Separate those two so that you can walk free knowing that, yes, God died for, your, for, your, for you and your sin. But now you've got to die to that sin. And I pray that there was something that we said that can help you first make that separation. And once that separation is made, begin to walk and understand your identity in Christ and then begin to face the sin nature, whatever it is, because we all sin and fall short of, of God's glory so that we are contained and holy because he, has de he does declare that. 
We love you. We honor and praise you. We pray uh, that this message brings you peace in your storm. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.